Thanks, Colleen, for that kind introduction. And I'm so excited to be here today. And I'm so excited you joined. And if you are watching this after on the recording, I hope you find this so valuable and really take a minute to sink in and think about the things we're going to be talking about today and how it can apply to your future. So let's dive in. Charting paths for value growth. Now, I want to start off actually with a picture. So imagine here with me, you see this path and you see the terrain, what comes to mind? Maybe it's what's around the corner. Is it a path that's wood flanked all the way to the destination? Does it go into the wilderness? And oh goodness, what's going to be next? And I want you to think about your business. I want you to think about what's happening in your business when you think about growth. Is it uncharted? Do you have a paved path you're walking that you know exactly the next steps you're going to take to hit the goals you want? Or is it a little bit like the jungle on the right hand side and you're like, I'm not sure where I'm going. I'm just going and I've got these goals and I'm going to get there no matter what. And it may be something like this, right? You see this beautiful rose. It's pretty. But rose, roses have what? They have thorns, right? They have thorns. So if you are going through your journey on your growth and you are walking through a bush of thorns with roses, it's not going to feel so pretty, but it could be part of your path. And I had this vision when I was looking at my journey in business. And sometimes I avoided the rose bushes because it was tough and they had thorns. And I didn't want to do certain things that would help myself grow and it was the shortest distance, right? You, So instead, I went around the thorn bush, right? The rose bush, but it took longer to get to the destination. And you too are faced every day with different growth, different challenges, different things. And sometimes we have to look at, is it going to be more beneficial to walk through the rose bush or work with somebody that will take me guided through the rose bushes so I don't get myself cut? And then what are the other tools and things I can do so I'm not taking so much time to go around and trying to figure it out all on my own? So just keep that in mind as we talk about today. Now, as you see this picture, what comes to mind? You see some coins stacked. You see a, a tree with money and holding it. It could be like organized money, right? And money tree grows money. But I want you to think about this as what if the left side was very consistent, right? Everything's in order, scaling. And what if the right was growing and making money, but there's a whole bunch of other things happening, right? So what's the difference? Is there a difference? What is scale and what is growing? So if I look at these two and they're used interchangeably, which gets kind of confusing. So what if I looked at them individually? So I want to read through these, and I don't like reading definitions on a presentation, but I do feel it's very important that we really sink in this. And if I am not going to read this, you're going to listen to me talking, try to read it, and it's not going to make sense. So scaling typically involves increasing revenue and profitability without proportional increase in resources or costs. This would mean that your scaling involves re replicating a successful business model or leveraging technology to achieve exponential growth, right? What companies do this? They've got the ability to increase revenue and profitability without proportional increase in resources or costs, meaning you may have to increase what your ad spend is or what you're doing to grow, but your profits and your revenue are increasing at the same amount. So that means I can exponentially grow knowing all my expenses, what will they will be and what my outcome will be. And this is by using a successful business model and a few other tools to help you scale smarter. Now, growing involves incremental, incremental, right, changes or expansion, development across various aspects of the business. That includes revenue, market share, product lines, geographical reach, a broad range of strategies, including diversification, market penetration, product innovation, and strategic partnerships. So many things go into growing. And if you think about how these work together, if I were to grow my business up to a point that I was systematized and I was able to turn on and off my marketing, then I might be ready for scaling. So I may grow up to scale and I may just 
stay in the growth stage for a number of years, depending on my business, depending on what I'm doing, depending on the changes that are happening. But who wins out on scaling? What companies are really good at this? And you might've said it, the franchises, right? There's a bunch out there. You're probably thinking of a handful in your head right now, that you may even go to and use. And they've used this idea of scaling once they had a proven model that worked. I.e., what do you see in this picture? More often than not, an assembly line represents a proven system, right? This is going to run day and night, however long it's going to run. It's going to be the same. People can change out. It's going to run the same. So thinking about this, how can I have my business get to a point where it can be scaled smarter? And you might be thinking a few things that I want you to think about before I give you my examples. How do companies scale smarter? I gave you a few in the slides before, but if you think about this, what are the things that are they're doing that can really help? And what things are, like let's say franchises doing, that are scalable and that I could sometimes implement into my business depending on where I'm at in my growth stages? So scaling smarter or in my business stages, let me rephrase that because growth and scale is different. So where am I in my business stage? So scaling smarter, proven business model. You got a proven business model, you could be ready to hit that scale button and go. Clean and consistent books. More often than not, books are not as clean as they should be. And this could lead to a mess as you grow. So you might be able to keep your books at a certain level with your bookkeeper. And if you're not using a bookkeeper at by yourself, but once you start to scale and once that time gets taken, who's going to help keep you consistent and clean? And also so you can actually see what revenue is coming in, what expenses are related to the revenue, and what's my actual profit. So you can even run projections and you can run different things that is not more like a guess. It's really pinpointed because you really know what's happening. Also, repeatable marketing. If you're not tracking your marketing, and you want to scale, this could be a little scary because if you do not know how much you need to spend and how many clients or prospects you need to meet to get the clients you need to be able to achieve the goals you have, you got to be able to turn that on and off. Meaning, I know this process works. When I do this process, I put this money. And when I do that process and put this money, I get this outcome, my return on investment. Very key for scaling a business that this is all worked out ahead of time. If you are working on this, you're still in the growth phase, right? You're getting them set. You're getting your repeatable marketing set. So that's okay. It's just where are you in your business and not jumping too much into the scale until you're ready for that. And also having the people and the support and all you need to scale. Because sometimes when you scale, you may not have the infrastructure for it. You don't have the people. You don't have the right processes, things are breaking down. So think about this, You've got to be flexible even within those systems, right? Marketing trends, things are changing. Am I flexible? Do I have all my risks managed, right? Am I doing a good job of doing risk management? If something happened to any of that process, I've got a plan in place. These things are also helping you build a, an exitable business, but also it helps you in scaling. So training and support, right? This is key in working with like franchise models, they need to have training support. But if you are running your own business, what training support are you getting? Like this is a great video to be watching and there's many others out there. So how are you taking the time each month with you and your team to just take in a little bit extra? How can I help my company, right? To scale and to grow smarter. Brand recognition, by this point, if you're ready to scale, having brand recognition helps you, right? People know who you are, at least in the industry you're working with. Not everybody has to know, but at least the market you're working with, your clientele have either heard about you or you're working with a strategic alliance that is known in the market. So once you come on board, it's seen as trustworthy and a part and you're ready for it, right? You're ready. Your brand has been seen and known. This helps you in this process. It's not um, not needed like at 100%, but you can benefit from having brand recognition even if you're young and, and new in the business. And young meaning the business is young. It's, it's in the either the establishment or survival, but really you're going to be doing scaling once you hit growth or mature and you've already outlined all these steps. Okay, so what do you see here? Right. We talked about scaling and that repeatable business 
What do you think this one is? Right? Growth. Exactly. It's about growing. And what does it take to grow? Right? In this picture, it takes care. It takes time. It takes nutrients. And there are a few key things in all growth of plants, right? And every plant is different, but, and all of us are different, right? We all have different types of growth cycles. Some may go faster, some may go slower, depending on the plant, depending on the person and depending on the business, right? Everybody has their own pace that they're taking at, but there's some things that are just essential that in everything you need, they can be replicated. Meaning in a plant, you need light, you need water, you need air. Those are key things for this plant to grow. If you don't have it, then what are you going to do? The things that are different are climate, nutrients, soil, like, well, you know, the amount of water, um, all different components of that, but it's all important to get to here. So when you think about your business and where you are and what does it take to get from this, you know, starting point all the way up to, hey, I'm mature, established, been around, done this before, and what am I doing right now? Am I growing my business or scaling? So this is all about getting from this first image on the right to that growth, and you got to grow, right? At that point, you can start to scale once you've grown. You could be a little smaller, right? You could be, you know, not all the way to the pinnacle mature stage before you start scaling, but some of those things are really important before you do start to scale. So how, if we think about this, how do I grow smarter? How and what can I do to grow sp smarter? Well, I could just expand my customer base, right? I'm working with a specific type of customer. Maybe I work with my customer on different product lines or services because that's just a natural fit. Or maybe I geographically grow. You could take this a few different ways. You would have to define it for yourself. How could you expand your current customer base? Maybe it is adding a new product or service. Maybe you've got one service and if they continued with you, they would go to the next service. Or maybe if they didn't want to go to that next service, you've got one that's below that one. So you don't lose them as a client. They just may pay less or meet you less often. So having this kind of structure, you think about consulting, like, okay, you went through my course. Now you're going to do coaching. And if you don't do coaching, you're going to go to my community. Just a simple way of looking at how we could use this to grow smarter. So I still am making money but I'm and I'm not losing my client. And then once they're ready, then we can move to the next step. Entering new markets, also another great thing. And I would say this one piggybacks off your strategic alliances, right? If you're going to enter a new market, great. Who do you know that's in the market that you can lean on for support, for training, for guidance, for expertise? So you can open that up and not, not go slowly and don't stop anything that's working while you're opening a new market. Very key to keep what's working in place and utilize what's working into that new market so you can leverage what you've already got. Also, innovation for customer experience. Think about if I'm going to grow smarter, I want my experience of my client to be really like a no. And also, how can it be better and what can be consistent? How can I make this consistent across the board for all my clients and for anybody that works with my the clients in your team, right? Streamlining those processes as you're growing, you're going to streamline SOPs, having things in place, um, standard operating procedures, make sure that everything is documented, put everything together. So when you grow and you scale, it's already been outlined. You don't have to go back and go, well, this is how we do this and this is how we do this. It's already been labeled while you're growing. So as you're changing things, you're just changing those different documents and then you've got a full system. You could also enhance employee benefits for retention. So if you're looking at growing, you want a team that's going to stick with you for the long haul. And if you're an individual, this may not relate to you, but you could think about this. If I did bring on a team member, what would I want to give them or what would they want to be empowered to want to grow, to want to take this business to the next level? That's super exciting, right? And how do they win in it? They get to win when you win. So how can they win? And also building those strategic alliances. This is huge. We're going to talk about this next, but how we can build strategic alliances to help grow smarter so I don't have to work so hard, right? And we'll talk about the, those benefits in a few. So just think about this, right? We talked about scale versus grow, scaling smarter versus growing smarter. And these are different things, right? Different goals, different 
the results, right? You may be able to use both. You may do one and then the other and even go back to one or the other, depending on what you're doing. So really, this is personal. It's a journey with your business. And some things are just repeatable, meaning they can be used consistently across a certain industry or across businesses as a whole. So let's dive into strategic partnerships, right? How do alliances supercharge your value? Think about that. How do my alliances supercharge my company value? How cool is that? Well, it gives you access to new markets. So if you have these supercharged alliances that have other markets other than yours, and you're looking to grow your business, not scale, grow your business. If they're in the same market doing the similar thing, you might be able to scale with them. But if it's a new market, that means you might be in the growth stage. You could share your resources, expertise. You can lean on each other. It may even reduce your risk, right? If you're um, doing things and maybe it's taking too much time or becoming a risk to your business, or you shouldn't probably be doing that because that's not what you're specialized in, you can go ahead and hand that off to the other specialists that you're working with and everybody wins, right? It might it might even save you on costs because if you don't have to train to do this and you don't have to learn everything and get your own designations, you can use somebody, focus in on what you're really great at and use that other resource, that other alliance to fill in the gaps, to be the other seats at the table. And then you get to have additional innovation. They may be using system and processes that you didn't think about and you could weave these things in right to your business and increase your own innovation through the process. Also, competitive advantage, you sometimes just by sheer working with others may be more competitive out there in the landscape of your uh, industry because you bring other people to the table with you. How awesome is that? More value for your clients. You get to win. Your strategic partner gets to win. And your client, everybody's winning along the way. So building supercharged alliances not too complicated, but there's a lot of key things that if you don't do this and keep in connection and communication, they fall apart pretty quick, right? Everybody's running their business. Everybody has a lot on their, their table that they're doing. So when you really want to work with somebody and you know it's a win-win on both sides, define some goals and objectives you guys want to do together. See if you can actually work on these things and hit those goals together. Maybe it's a number of clients that you want to work together, or maybe it's a amount of revenue you guys want to work on together. Maybe it's even some other objective that's about growing that's related to your industry and you guys are working hand in hand. You could also leverage each other's skills, right? If you understand and really know what they're doing, not just surface level, but really understand how they work together and at what point is it good to pull a client through that process to your alliance, this can be powerful. Keeping your roles and responsibilities separate and sometimes intertwined, meaning you might have meetings together with the client because you're both working on things that it would make more sense if you were working together. But between your alliances, the most important key is consistent communication. And we suggest once a month, if you can, Touch base with your alliance, send them an email, send them a video, send them something, schedule a meeting, do something in that process. And this is somebody you're working with hand in hand. So you have consistent communication. Don't drop this because this is where things fall apart. You want to be top of mind. You want to be remembered and you want to also have that good connection so you can send somebody and they know the process and everybody's on the same page. This will foster trust, collaboration, and you get to win win. Okay. So the question here is, are, who are your supercharged alliances? Who in your network right now are you working with and utilizing this, putting this into play? And if you are, congrats, it can be great. And if you're not, what things on that list are you missing that could make this a supercharged alliance? Maybe it's an alliance, maybe it's not supercharged, but if you did these things, it could take it to the next level. Or who in your network could be a really great strategic partner that you just an alliance that you just didn't think about, but now you're thinking about it, you can. If you think about an example of like a wedding planner, a wedding planner needs a, a videographer, a photographer, a caterer. They need a, you know, a church. They need all these things, right? And then those all need you, right? So if you're thinking about this, they all need that wedding planner. Now everybody works hand in hand together. And you think about your business, your business may not need those things, right? So you have to think about in my business, 
What do clients usually work with? Where am I missing? Where are the referrals potentially coming to me? Who are they working with? And where are they going? Once I get done, who are those people they need to be working with? Because I'd be the next best step. So hopefully that helps. And, and as you think about this process and you think about your strategic lines, your, your clients, your prospects, I wanted to share this picture because it's so powerful. Because if you're doing all that, but you are in the sea of yellow butterflies, you may get overlooked. So how are you standing out in the crowd? How are you coming out? If you've got financial advisors and there's a room of 30 and there's five people, who, who are they going to pick? What's going to make them pick you over somebody else, right? Customer service? Well, everybody probably says I have good customer service. So what other things are you bringing to the table that makes it more specialized to you and what you bring. And even thinking about like, what do you wish everybody knew about your business? It's so interesting when I talk to people and I hear, you know, when you say, what do you do? And they share what they do. And then you say, what do you wish people knew about your business? Sometimes it's completely different. Like, why didn't you tell me that? What do you wish everybody knew is actually what is beautiful about your business. So just think about that when you share. I know like, one of the scariest things, the questions is, what do you do when you go networking? That was my, I was so afraid of answering that question. And even now, sometimes people will default and I've defaulted to it, right? Oh, I'm a planner, you know, I'm a financial advisor or I'm a tax um, CPA and, and it just stops there, right? That didn't give me any uniqueness. That was a bunch of yellow butterflies. They're beautiful. They have great things they're doing, but the one that sticks out is going to really do a few things differently. So what are those ways? Do you know a few ways? How are you standing out of the crowd? What have you put into place? And if you haven't put anything into place, how can you, right? What can I do? Well, maybe you can take some of my suggestions here and that would be make it personal. So how am I making this personal? What can I do to make it personal? And if I'm not making it personal, how can I make it personal for that individual? I'm going to leave with value. There are six value drivers. We talked about this in the first section uh, session, and we talked about this in the second session. What are those value drivers, right? Well, I've got organizational, strategic, employee, customer, financial, ESG, which is environmental, social, and governance. So leading with value, think about what is valuable to the client. Those six value drivers are just for you to remember. So we I want to keep this intertwined through. This session is all about growing the value of your business. We have to remember what are the value drivers and everything we're talking about today falls into one of those six categories. But when I'm speaking to somebody and I lead with value versus what do I want, right? What's in it for them? W-I-F-U-I-F-N. What's in it for me? <laughs> What's W-I-F-M? What's in it for me? What's in it for them, right? If I think about this in that way, then it starts to change the delivery, right? Instead of me just sharing for 20 minutes about what I do, maybe I'm asking questions. What are they doing? What are they experiencing? How can I share what I do from the benefits of what maybe they've shared? Well, that's interesting you shared that because actually we work with business owners just like you that are usually facing this and this problem. And what we see is usually they don't have time to take care of it. And that's what we do. We help them you know, strategically build, blah, 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 right? You get to build that kind of conversation around it with leading with value. What do you want them to get? And making it personal. Radical transparency, right? Sometimes we try to be so perfect and everything has to appear perfect, but sometimes people want to see like what's happening behind the scenes. What's your process? Is it that path, right? That goes off into, we don't know, when they meet with you, or is it very clear, like this is the first step, then I've got the next step, and this is the third step, we're going to make a decision if it's a good fit to work together or not, and then we move on our way. Very, very um, important to be able to do this. If you are too secretive, it may feel like it's untrustworthy and or they're unsure. So be careful with this. Sometimes that is the branding. It is super secretive, and to get in this group, you've just got to you know, you're usually talking to other people, trust the process and go with it. So understand that this is a branding technique, but it's also 
about how do you stand out and what will help you stand out in your industry. And you got to look at what your industry is doing. What are people doing that are like you? How are they sharing? Another thing is ask your clients, ask them what they want. What do they want? What are they doing about it? What would help with whatever they, you know, their experience with you? How can you be better? If you're asking them how you could be better and how you could stand out of the crowd, they may share with you. And that'd be really awesome, right? That'd be really an incredible way. And sometimes we just don't ask how we can stand out from everybody else. What are they looking for that's unique that they haven't seen anybody else do? And they tell you that, and then you implement it, probably open the door to a lot more stuff. Relentless execution. This comes from the EPI network, that Exit Planning Institute. Wow. If you're doing relentless execution, you're going to stand out of the crowd. And keeping in communication with throughout the process with your clients, prospects, everything along the way, lots of communication. They feel like they're, they are being touched multiple times. This is really important and valuable, especially if you have a timetable and it's um, you've got gaps of time that you're touching in between the gaps. Also streamlining the process, incorporate tech where you can. It's 2024, right? We're in the 2020s. Let's get some tech into your process if it's a benefit. And if you can, how can you stand out of the crowd with that tech if it's going to help with with your company or with your um, prospecting or your cycle or even streamlining that process, right? What automation tools can I use? How can I be that unique one with what I've got? And what could I add? And then organization. Sometimes just being organized helps you stand out, right? Having that, you know, everything tidy and ready to go and put in order. I mean, if if you were to give me another title, it'd be that it'd be a business organizer because I just love putting businesses and keeping them organized because it just shows that you've got things in order and you're going to keep your client in order on the things they want to accomplish. And the last one we're going to cover today is this one. What does this say to you? Got people raising their hand? Exactly. Asking. Sometimes we miss the power in asking by looking like we are all put together and sometimes we miss it. So what could happen if we just asked our clients or our employees how we could innovate, how we could do better, what we could do? And the power of asking is you can now go from what you think to what does your customer think? Big change, right? What do they think? What are they looking for? What are they, what would help them? Innovation mining, what are your employees? Everybody from the C-suite team all the way through to all the different roles, every level, everybody has ideas of how to make the process better, how to make their business better, how to make, they will share if they are asked and if it's open and, and free to share. And then when you do that, you get engagement and empowerment. Your, your ideas are now diverse and you get a lot of different perspectives on it. You might see a consistent pattern, which is really powerful because then you could do that, right? That would be something that would benefit the business. You could get increase your rapid iteration of things and adaption and a greater buy-in. How great would it be if your clients and your employees and everybody walked through this with you with a greater buy-in and ownership? Wow, right? You have now taken the power of asking to the next level and that's raising the bar. So I want to bring this back. You have two choices here, right? You can scale or grow. And you might do one and then move to the other. But if you had a choice today, which one would you choose based on what we talked about so far? Which one would you choose? Do you want to build or do you, or do you want to scale or do you want to grow, right, in the pathway to it? And hopefully by going through this process, you can see that sometimes the pathways are not as scary. You may have some unknowns, but working with people or looking at examples, you can find those paths and or you might just do some tough learning and walk through the rose bush if you need to. But there are different ways, different paths, different ways to get to the destination. It's just being curious to explore. So here's your exploration. List three actions you can take to scale or grow in 90 days. Super important. Every session, we want to have you taking action. So this one is three actions you can take to scale or grow. So you got to choose one or the other. And in 90 days, what are a few actions you can take? That might be starting a strategic alliance. That might be putting your processes in order. That might be reviewing your books and making sure your books are clean. Adding a 
uh, tracking system to my marketing because at some point I want to scale. So I need to actually get all that in place. I want to get a repeatable marketing process. Whatever you choose, write it down and put those actions into play over the next 90 days. And we can't wait to hear what's happening along the way. So let's recap what did we cover today. Scale versus grow, scaling smarter, growing smarter, the benefits and building of supercharged alliances. This is so key. Standing out of the crowd. Yes. Be that blue butterfly out there. Shine and power of asking. Don't forget to ask. So as you think about this session, I want you to think about what value add takeaways are you going to be taking away? Maybe you can pick your favorite hat here in the list, but sometimes we're wearing a lot of them, right? And hopefully that today you can walk away with at least one thing. You're going to put some actions into place, but at least one thing that really got you thinking, yeah, this really could help my business if I did this. And then what are those actions that I could 